artists, welcome to your camping painting class. In front of you, you should have your canvas, your cup of water, a larger brush and a smaller brush, a paper towel. Also for your colors, you should have yellow, dark green, light green, light blue, red, brown, dark blue, and black. I do recommend a plate as well so you can mix some colors. If you do not have all those materials, you're welcome to pause the video and come back to um, your painting class whenever you're ready. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, go ahead and grab both of your brushes and swirl them around in your cup of water to get them nice and clean. I'm just gonna swirl with my two brushes, get them nice and clean. And then I'll gently pat them on my paper towel. Lined up. Awesome. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our dark blue and we're going to paint all that sky space with the dark blue and our big brush. So I'm going to grab my big brush and my dark blue and I'm going to go over the outline of my mountains so I know exactly where to stop. So big brush, dark blue, start just kind of going over that line like so, go back for more dark blue. If you don't want your paint to be dripping off your brush, that means you have too much on there. You can always wipe it off on your paper towel or your, or your plate. All right, my mountains are also gonna curve over to the left, so I'll make a line right there and curve over to the right. So I'll just kind of make a line right there where my mountains kind of continue. Once I'm done making the outline, I'm going to go back to my dark blue and paint all that space above the line that I just made by going side to side. And again, I'm using my big brush and my dark blue paint. I'm going to cover up all that space and then in a moment we'll paint the top part of our canvas and the sides where the sky kind of folds over. Nice blue sky. And I go over my outline a little bit too so I can just kind of break up that line work. Nice long lines to kind of smooth out any brush strokes you might see. I also do recommend doing two coats of this blue, which means you paint it once, let it dry for a couple minutes, and go back and give it a second coat. Once you're done, you can start painting the top part of your canvas. It all nice and clean. And then the side above that line you made, above the mountain, above that line that you made above the mountain. And again, I would give it a minute or two to dry and then go back, see if you missed any spots. Give it a nice second coat to really cover up your canvas. Nice blue sky. Give it some time and then go back for that second coat and that'll just kind of sit on top a little bit better. Nice long brush strokes. If you have any bumps, go over it to smooth it out. Don't forget about the sides. Perfect. All right, I can get the top part again, the left side and the right side. 
All right, once you're done, you don't have to wash your brush. Just go ahead and take your big brush and wipe most of that dark blue off on your paper towel. Again, you don't have to wash it. Just kind of wipe off all that excess blue off on your paper towel. There can still be a little bit on there. The next thing you want to do is we are going to dip into our light blue with our big brush and paint our water um, this light blue color. And again, it's okay if there's still a little bit of that dark blue on there. I'm going to outline this bottom part so I know where to stop. I'm going to go over my line work and then over here to the right. And I can go back. this line to make a line and again we're going to continue these lines to the sides because we want to paint the sides um, and the top and bottom of our canvas so it looks nice and neat when we hang it all right so made that long line made the other long line and I can go in there and paint again side to side movements with the brush be careful of your canoe if you want, you can even take your big brush or your small one and go around the canoe so you don't really get any in that space. Otherwise, just be super careful. Always go back for more light blue. Again, nice, long, smooth lines. Just kind of smooth it out. You don't see those short brush strokes. Keep it nice and smooth. You can use your small brush if you want to get closer to the canoe. Okay, don't forget about the space to the right. And then again, when you're done, you can paint the space between the two lines that you made for the water area. Left space, right space. And if you want to, you can give this a second coat as well. If you feel like you can still see too much of the white canvas peeking through can give it a minute or two to dry and then go over it when it's not so shiny and a little bit more dry. Give it a nice second coat. Perfect. All right. Um, since we still have a little bit of light blue on our brush, we're going to go in there and make some light blue clouds up here. Um, so if you want to watch first and uh, whenever you're ready, you're welcome to jump in. And if you're still working on your dark blue sky and your light blue uh, water, you're welcome to pause the video until you are ready for your clouds. All right, so I have a little bit of light blue still on my brush. I'm going to make some clouds. All I'm going to do is make a line where I want my clouds to be, and I can always go back for a little bit more light blue if it's not showing up too well. So I'm going to make a line up here. I'm going to make a line a little bit lower down. Just kind of sweeping my brush going side to side. And then I'll make another light blue line over here. So just barely pushing on my brush. Three thin light blue lines. One here, one here, and one to the right. Once I'm done, I'm going to build on top of these lines by just kind of moving my brush. Kind of in an up and down, bumpy movement. A little bit here, a little bit there. You can even stretch it out. So if you want to watch again, and I'm going to come in a little bit to the right, create some bumps, and just kind of fill it in. Do this one, come in a little bit to the right, come up, 
and kind of fill in those spaces and you can lengthen the sides too if you want. But all I did was kind of go up a little bit and then fill in all the space underneath it. You can even elongate these lines too. So you have these nice long lines. Perfect. You can always go back and touch it up by making those lines again. You can go back over the little bumps and fill them up a little bit better. All right. And then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and wash and dry your big brush. We are going to work on our grassy area next. And again, if you are not done with your blues, you are welcome to uh, wa um, go ahead and push pause on the video. So wash and dry. Next, um, we're going to use our big brush again. We're going to put a little bit of light green and a little bit of dark green. Doesn't matter which one you do first, but both of the greens are going to be on your big brush at the same time. And we are going to paint all the space down here. I don't want you to get too close to this line just yet. Give it some more time to dry, but everything underneath here, except for your tent is going to be dark green, light green. And again, painting side to side with your big brush. And have those two greens working together. And work down here for a little while before you get close to your light blue. So light green, dark green, side to side. And I'm avoiding that wet light blue because I don't want the two wet colors to touch. Otherwise, they'll start blending together, mixing together. Once I get closer to my tent, again, I can create an outline around it so I know where to stop. Kind of go in there for more light green, dark green. If you have any bumps, go over it and smooth it out. While I'm waiting for the light blue to dry, I can start working on the sides where my grass kind of folds over and also on the bottom part. all that grassy area and we do want it to be nice and dry before we build the fire on top of it. And I can kind of get a little bit closer to that light blue now that I've kind of given it some time to dry. So light green, dark green on your brush and just kind of drag your big brush 
if it's still shiny and wet, if your light blue is still shiny and wet, maybe give it a little bit more time before you get close to it. And again, I would recommend two coats on your grassy area so you have some good coverage. Make sure to smooth it out, get rid of any bumps, nice long brush strokes. Don't forget about the sides and the very bottom. Oopsie. And if you want to do three coats, you can. Just be sure you have the grassy area nice and covered. Whenever you're done, you are going to wash and dry your big brush. And then on this step, be sure you do have a paper plate because we are going to be mixing a little bit of our black and our dark blue to create the, um, the grayish um uh, kind of tones um, for our uh, mountain area. So whenever you're done, and again, you're welcome to push pause if you're still working in the grassy area. But whenever you're done, you are gonna get a scoop of dark blue. Let's do two scoops so that we make sure we have enough. Two scoops of dark blue with your big brush. And then you mix some black in it. So I got a little bit of black. You just got a dot of black because a little bit of black goes a long way. Maybe one more dot of black, so just a little bit. So two scoops of dark blue and two dots boop, boop, of black. So I just barely dipped my brush in there for the black. And a nice grayish blue. And then whenever you're done, with your mix, just kind of wipe off the sides of your big brush. Make sure you don't have big chunks of paint on there. You are gonna outline your mountains on the top so you have a nice clean line. And then don't forget to carefully Carry it over to the left where the mountains meet the sky and to the right. And then when I paint my mountains, I, I kind of move with the shape of my mountains. So I'm gonna go back to my mix with my big brush. I'm just kind of working my way down and then I'll work my way up and I'll work my way down. And I wanna fill up all that space and be very careful. Um, if you want, you can even take your big brush and outline this bottom area. That might be a good idea. Just so you don't get anything past that line. And again to the left where it curves over to the right. You can start moving down and up your mountain. sides as well. I'm just kind of painting side to side over here. But all that space where your mountains are, you do want to paint it with your mix. And you can always go back and make some more. And if your new mix doesn't look so much like your old mix, if you're making some more, you can always add water to your brush. Tap it on your paper towel several times and then go over your two colors, that water will help them work together a little bit better. So if you don't have enough of your mix, you can always make some more. If they don't match well, then you can always add water to your brush, tap it on the paper towel, and go over the two. the 
this dry for a little bit. And then once you're done, if you can go ahead and wash and dry your big brush really well. You really want to get all that paint off of it. You can even hug your brush with your paper towel by wrapping it around. Perfect. All right. Um, we're going to give our mountain some time to dry. Um, let's go ahead and come down and work on our canoe. Since our canoe is really small, let's grab our small brush. So put your big brush aside and grab your small brush. And we're gonna start off with our small brush and our brown paint. And this top area of our canoe where you would sit, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe even outline and then fill in this top part because it looks like a football shape. So this is with my small brush. I'm just going in there with the top part of my I'm going in the top part of my canoe. And I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to my brush, so maybe just a little bit of brown and yellow. And then I'm gonna work on this bottom part. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Because I want the, the bottom part to be a little bit lighter than the top part. I'm going to outline this bottom part. And then just kind of fill in. So then you can see the separation a little bit better. The inside of the canoe is brown. The outside is brown with a little bit of yellow. Almost looks like a mustardy yellow. Perfect. All right, and then we're gonna go in there and make our the orc so we can row our little canoe. So a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow. And if you're still working on this part, you're welcome to um, pause the video. Maybe even give this part some time to dry. And then we're gonna go in there, once you're done, and make a slanted line, barely pushing on our small brush. Coming up a little bit and coming down a little bit. And then I'm gonna push down a little bit more down here. So it's just a little bit wider. I don't wanna go down too far, just like that. Cute, and we'll just let that, that dry for just a moment. So be sure you're just pushing down a little bit more so this part is just a little bit thicker. But I'm barely pushing on my brush. I made a diagonal line closer to the front. And then I came to the bottom part. I'm just going to push a little bit more. Perfect. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and wash and dry your brush. There is a little bit of brown in the water to kind of the reflection. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown on my small brush, tap it on my paper towel a couple times so I barely have any brown on there. And then I'm just gonna make these little lines side to side, barely pushing on my brush. So I have one, two, three, four, five, about six lines there, but barely pushing on my brush, just tiny, tiny little pushes of my brush. If you feel like you got too much on there, you can let it dry and then go back in there with some light blue to kind of cover up some of the brown. But I just barely push on my brush, made a little reflection in the water going side to side. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna stick with my small brush and my brown paint. 
I'm gonna make the wood for my fire. The wood for my fire is actually uh, pretty easy. So small brush, brown paint. I'm gonna go over here to the left and I'm gonna make a line going side to side about this long. I'm gonna make another line going up and down almost like a plus sign. And then I'm gonna make an X through the plus sign. So I'm gonna make one line here, one line here. And that'll be my fire. I do wanna make those brown lines a little bit thicker. So first I made a plus sign, then I made an X. Now I'll go back and just kind of make that wood a little bit thicker. I'm gonna just bring in my brush to the center. So I'm gonna push a little bit harder on that brush. Since I have brown on my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and start on my um, tent. I'm gonna take my small brush and my brown paint and I'm gonna outline this triangle in brown. And I'll just kind of paint it side to side with brown as well. So I outlined and filled in with my small brush, like so. Same thing here. All right. Once you're done, you don't even have to clean your um, small brush. You are gonna paint your tent red. First, you're gonna outline it. So don't clean your brown. You want a little bit of brown a little bit of red on your small brush and then I'm going to go in there and outline my tent. My tent just has a little bit of brown to it. I always go back for more red. So it's my small brush with a little bit of brown and a little bit of red and I'm just outlining that shape so I can get it back. I even go over my little entrance right there. All right. And whenever you're ready, you can wash and dry your small brush and you can go in there with your big brush. Be sure it's nice and clean and your red paint. You can paint the inside of it. Again, I'm just kind of going side to side. This red paint seems kind of thin, so I would recommend two coats. And you do want to kind of grab some of that brown that's in the outline. A little bit so I'm gonna go over and kind of grab some and so a nice red fish brown tent and again I would recommend two coats of this red I'm just gonna kind of painting side to side if you have any bumps go over it to smooth it out Go over that outline again, get kind of messy. And I would again recommend two coats of this red. So you're gonna paint it once, let it dry for a couple minutes, and then go back and give it another coat. Later on, we'll go back in there and add some more details as well. 
But for now, let's just let it dry. All right, wash and dry. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some snow on top of our mountains. We're gonna use our small brush and our light blue paint. So be sure you have a nice, clean, small brush, a nice, clean, light blue paint. If you're still working on your tent or your um, the wood for your fire, you're welcome to push pause. But whenever you're ready, small brush, light blue paint. And all you're gonna do is start from the top of your mountain and almost like sun rays, you're gonna go out. I'm gonna start from the top. I'm gonna start going out. Like so. Light blue. It's a little bit of paint. And just kind of go out like sun rays. And there is definitely a lot on top. And you'll see these lines kind of moving their way down. So there's one. And I'm going to go back for more light blue. Start at the top of this mountain. Just going to sweep down and coming down like sun rays all the way around. You can go back and add some more. And if you got too much on there, you can always let it dry and go back and add some of your dark blue black mix and go over some of these lines. Then once you're done, you can wash and dry your small brush. We're gonna move to trees next. All right, so our mountains are nice and dry. Our snowy parts are more on top, so we don't have to worry too much about our green trees touching um, the snow. Uh, but I am gonna go back to my small brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a darker green. So I already have this dark green on my plate. I'm gonna take my small brush and do three scoops on my plate. And then I get a dot of black and mix myself a nice dark, even darker green. So it's just a little bit darker. So three scoops of the dark green, one dot of black, bring it over and mix. It's my small brush. Be sure to wipe off the sides when you're done. Once I am done with my mix and I've wiped off the sides, I am gonna start building my trees. I'm just gonna make lines to show the height at first, and I wanna make sure there's space between each one. So above my water, where this dark green kind of starts, I'm gonna make my trees. So there's my first line. And yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. But be sure you're kind of overlapping over your mountains. There's that one. Right now, all I'm doing is kind of showing the height of my trees. There's that one. There's that one. And I'm going back to my darkest green mix that I just made. There's that one. Be sure you have some tall versus some short ones. Be sure that you're not going um, past the snow, so you don't really want to go too far past the snowy area. And I'm just making lines where my trees are going to grow. Some shorter ones, working with some taller ones. And then once I'm done, 
I'm going to go back from more of that mix that I made. Have all my lines uh, set out, space between each one. And I'm going to just be jumping with my small brush. Each tree is going to look like a triangle shape. So I'm going to be going side to side wider and come to a point. And I'm going to be zigzagging back and forth. So if you just want to watch. So same small brush, same dark green mix that I made. I'm going to start to the left. I'm just going to jump. I'm going to zigzag. I'm going to get smaller and smaller with my line work and to a point to the top. So let me show you that again. I'm going to start to the left and zigzag back and forth across this line. And my lines are getting shorter and shorter. And then I boop, have a little point on top pretty much. So more of my dark green. I'm going to start to the left. I'm going to zigzag back and forth to this line. And boop. Up to the top. Start to left, zigzag back and forth. My lines are getting shorter and shorter, and boop, go to the top. Going back and forth, making sure these are getting shorter and shorter, and I make sure my tree has a top on it. I'm going to do the same thing to all of them. And in just a moment, I will add some reflections. And the water with a lighter green. So I'm going to start to the left, zigzag back and forth by just kind of jumping with my brush. And I want to bring it. Same thing over and over again. You're working your way down. There's a lot of trees. You want it to be nice and full. You don't really want to have too much space between each one. You can always go back and build lines too between the trees if you want it to be full. In a certain space, you can always go back and build another line and then build your tree on it. Jumping up and down, boop, boop, boop. Like so, all the way down. I'm just going to zigzag back and forth by jumping with my brush. Make sure all your trees have a nice point on the top and they're wider on the bottom. Okay. Uh, once you're done, you don't have to wash your brush. You can just wipe it off on your paper towel. And if you're still working on your trees, you're welcome to push pause. We'll wipe off your brush on your paper towel. You're gonna go to your light green. And you don't want too much on there, so maybe tap some of that off on your paper towel as well. And all I'm going to do is make lines kind of going side to side how we did earlier, but in my reflections in the water. And they're going to go from long lines to short lines because it's the reflection. So I'm going to make little lines, just barely pushing my brush, and then boop. So they're like upside down versions of our trees. So it's longer and I'm going side to side and shorter. And look at the length. Is this one longer or shorter? So I'm going to start off long. Make sure it's a bit shorter. I'm just making little side to side lines. Make sure that they come to a point. They're like the upside down triangle versions. Okay, going side to side. Okay, side to side. And go back to more light green. 
tap out my paper towel. If they got too light, you can always go back to your dark green mix and your light green. You can have them both on your brush. That same side to side kind of movement. You can't really see the rest of the tree down here, so we're gonna work up here in our water. But more, same with this one, same with this one. The canoe is covering the rest of the shadow from our views. There's barely any paint on my brush. Kind of creating those triangle shapes. Perfect. All right, uh, once you're done, you can wash and dry your brush. I would recommend doing another coat of this brown before I start making the fire. But once you have um, a good amount of coverage on this brown, let it dry. And the next thing you're gonna do is build your fire. You want a nice, clean, small brush, washed and dried. You're gonna go to your yellow paint with your small brush. You're gonna start in the center and almost make kind of like a happy face shape, like so. So in the center, I made a kind of like a smile. And then I'm gonna bring it up on that side and bring it up on that side, almost like a teardrop shape. If your brown's still wet, you can wipe it off on your paper towel, maybe give it some more time to dry. You can go in there and just kind of fill in that teardrop shape. I'm just kind of sweeping up. Once you're done, you don't even have to clean your brush. Um, you can grab some yellow and some red and mix yourself a nice orange. So a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. And I'm gonna start on the left side of my fire. I'm gonna kind of start with a smiley face with us and I'm gonna make a little curve right here, make a little curve right there, make a little curve right there. So I started on the bottom and I made almost like a backwards S shape. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, but more of an S shape, so. And I'm just kind of getting taller and taller with that one. Make one in the middle up there too. So you see these backward S's and it can go from large to small, or to medium to small or small, to medium to large. And same on this side. You have a smaller S, a medium S, and your bigger S. You can have one up top here too, with just a little bit of a curve on it. I'll work that in there. Cool. You can even go back to just a little bit more red on your brush and just add some little sweeps of red here and there. But again, I do recommend giving two coats of your yellow, your orange. If you want to add another little bit of red in there too. So backward S shapes, more of S shapes, small, medium, large. And then I had one on top in the middle as well. Make that bottom part a little bit wider. Add some more yellow in there. Make sure it's nice and curvy. I'll go back to my orange a little bit and maybe just make some little boop lines here and there. My fire. A last thing you're gonna do on your little fire area on the wood, you're gonna wash and dry your brush and you're gonna add a little bit of black and a little bit of that light blue. So I washed and dried my small brush once I was done with my fire. I'm gonna add a little bit of light blue just to add a little bit of light here and there. Barely, just kind of randomly here and there. Boop. And I'm flipping. So just a little bit of that light blue. I can wash and dry my brush. And a little bit of black, just a dot of black. Not too much on there. Just kind of adding a little bit of lines, almost just like adding detail here and there. Make it pop a little bit more. And if you did put too much blue or too much uh, black on there, just let it dry and add some more brown to it in just a moment. 
All right, next is adding detail to our um, tent. So same idea that we kind of did over here in the campfire area. I can blend that in a little bit more, sorry. It's too bright, so I'm gonna go over that just a little bit more with just some water on my brush. So I just kind of added water, tapped it on my paper towel, and just kind of worked that in a little bit more. My uh, blue seemed too bright. I'm even going to add a little bit more brown here and there. But same idea that we did over here, um, but with our camp area. We're going to add some sweeps of light blue. So I'm going to go in there. Small brush, I cleaned it. I'm going to start out here, and I'm going to sweep, which means I'm just going to flick my brush like that. I'm going to flick my brush like that on that line. Down here, I'll flick. Up here, I'll flick. So kind of like where my outline was before. Flick down here, flick down here, just so that I can see the shape of my tent a little bit more. Then I can even add maybe some in the corners going side to side right here. Maybe some up here around the door. Or not the door, but the, kind of the open area. So I just added a little bit of light blue to my brush, tiny bit, maybe even wipe some off in your towel. And kind of where the outline was before, you're going to sweep, where you're going to flick your brush to kind of get that shape back a little bit more. Then you can wash and dry your brush. And go to your black paint and then maybe even wipe some off on your paper towel and then same idea you can go in there and just kind of sweep over here sweep over here down here pretty much where our outline pencil outline was at the beginning to kind of get that shape back a little bit more I'm just kind of barely pushing on my brush you can even make these lines going side to side over here as well I kind of want to get that shape of my tent back a little bit more. So adding these lines will help it. Even with our canoe, if you wanted to, you can add a little bit of black up here. A little bit of black down here. Kind of get the shape of your canoe back a little bit. Just a little bit of black. Just kind of sweeping. A little bit of brush strokes here and there. Oh, that one went kind of crazy. Getting that shape back a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. All right. One more thing before we are all done. I am going to wash and dry my small brush, add a little bit of light green, tap it on my paper towel, and mostly on the bottom part of my trees, I'm going to go back and just add a little bit of light green where there's a little bit of light hitting it. I'm just gonna go back and zigzag over it. This is optional, it's just if you wanna add a little bit of brightness to your trees if you feel like some of it got lost. You're just overlapping over what you did before with light green and it's just showing a little bit more of the reflection and the light from the water. Go in there, I'm just gonna add some lighter green on the bottom half of your trees just by going back and forth. And otherwise you are all done you are welcome to go back and touch anything up go back and give your painting another coat in any areas just be aware if a wet color touches another wet color they are gonna mix so if you wanted to give your painting some time to dry before you put any more color on top of it make sure it's not too shiny there is your amazing camping picture which sounds so great to do right now i hope you guys had fun i hope um hopefully you'll join us again thank you so much from young adult